All right, so this right here, they are all wrong. And let me know which one you think is the worst mistake. But anyway though, I'm gonna correct them all for you guys right now. Starting with the first one, integral of x squared dx. Well, yeah, we can just use the reverse power rule. Add one to the power, we get three, and divided by the new power, we have the one sitting in the front, so what's wrong with this? Well, you know it. This right here is missing the plus c. And remember right here I said, don't forget the plus c, all right? So this is technically wrong, because it should be one third x to a third power plus c. All right, now let's try the next one. Here we have integral of sine squared x. Hey, we have the second power. Can we just add one to the power and we get three? And divided it up by the power, we have the one third. So what's wrong with this? Well, first, let me convince you guys that this is wrong. To do so, we'll take the derivative of this. So if you see the derivative of one third, sine to the third power means sine x inside and then to the third power. Well, to do this, you first you bring the power to the front and then minus one, the power rule on the outside. And you get one third times three, which is one. And then this thing right here stays inside and then raised to a second power. Hey, isn't that the same as the original? But wait, one more thing. Remember when you take the derivative, always use the chain rule. Forgetting the chain rule is just as bad as forgetting the plus c. I think forgetting the chain rule is worse. All right, anyway though, use the chain rule multiplied by the derivative of sine, which is cosine x. And you see the original does not have the cosine. That's why this right here is incorrect. We can only use the reverse power rule if the base is just an x, right? Not like sine x, no. So how do we do this? Well, for sine square x, we can actually reduce the power. And to do so, we need to use an identity. So have a look. Integral of sine square x. Hmm. What identity can we use? Well, some of you guys might be thinking, can we use one minus cosine square? Because this is equal to that. True that, but unfortunately, if you replace this right here, yes, you can integrate one, but how do you integrate negative cosine square x? You run into the same situation. So this is not going to be helpful for this. Don't worry, we have another one, and that is right here, right? I have my identity for you guys right here as well. This right here is equal to 1 half 1 minus cosine of 2x dx. The beauty of this is not only that this identity is on my shirt, but the power right here is 2. Right now the power here is 1. Right, so that's the key. So this is the power reduction identity for the sine square. Now to integrate this, we have the one half is just a constant multiple. Put that outside. Here we are looking at one half. And let's just open the parentheses for the result of the integration. Integral of one in the x world, we get x. Next, integrating negative cosine of two x. And notice, here is just a number times x, then we can do the following. Think about what's the antiderivative for negative cosine. The answer for that is, Still negative, and then we have sine. Because the derivative of negative sine gives us negative cosine. And then you maintain the same input. But wait, this time we have to do the chain rule but backwards. Meaning we are going to look at the inside. The derivative of that is 2, but we are doing the antiderivative, so divided by 2. So we have the 1 half right here. So that's it. So for more practice like this, uh, technically you need to use a u sub. But if the inside is just a number times x, you can just do it like that. For more practice, I will have a link in the description so you guys can master this kind of things. If you do this, you will save a lot of times with the little u substitution and all that. Anyway though, I'm just going to distribute and write down the answer right here. So we have 1 over 2x and then this times that minus 1 over 4 and then sine of 2x and all done so put a plus c that's it what's wrong with this this is so wrong what's the connection between this and that if today we are talking about the derivative of inverse tangent of x 
this right here is 1 over 1 plus x squared. But the question right here is the integral of inverse tangent of x. So it's not this. Right? By the way, don't put on plus here. It's a derivative. So how do we integrate inverse tangent of x though? Yes, it's on my shirt right here. I can tell you the answer. You guys can take a look and tell me what the answer is. But I'll show you guys with integration by parts. Inverse functions usually do it with integration by parts. How? Check this out. Integrating inverse tangent of x, I can't. So why don't we try to differentiate this instead? So differentiate one part and integrate the other. That's the idea of integration by parts. I cannot integrate this. Let's try to differentiate this. And then I will just integrate one because it's like one times that one. You can think about this as integrate the dx by just one. So D stands for to differentiate, I stands for to integrate, and then on the side, put down plus, minus to get ready. This is equivalent to the u, v stuff right here. Integral u, d, v is equal to u, v minus the integral of v, d, u. It's on my shirt, it has to be correct. Right, anyway, though, differentiate this. Now we can take the derivative that 1 over 1 plus x squared and integrate this is just x. How this works is, you go ahead and multiply this and that, that's the first part of the answer. So we will have x times inverse tangent of x. But wait, not done yet. You still have to multiply this row and then put that inside an integral. That's a minus, so you have a minus integral. This times that, I can put the x on the top and then over 1 plus x squared. So we have to figure this out. So, in fact, this right here is called the second step of the DI method, where you can integrate a product of a row. For more details on this, I will have the tutorial in the description for your convenience. Now, to integrate this, just go ahead and do a u sub. I'm going to let u equal to the bottom. You see du will be 2x dx, Isolate the dx, we get dx equals du over 2x. So if you just focus on this part, all right, you get the integral x over 1 plus x squared is the u, and then dx is du over 2x. Very nice, because the x and x cancel, and we can put the 1 half to the front, and then integral of 1 over u, du. What's the integral of 1 over u? Natural log, right? So this right here will give us 1 half ln of u, and u is 1 plus x squared. And usually we put an absolute value because we have to make sure instead of the ln is positive. But 1 plus x squared is always positive. So a regular parenthesis is just fine. So this is the result for this part, right? And now I can write down the answer for you guys right here for C. So first, we will have that x times inverse tangent of x. And then minus this, which is that 1 half ln of 1 plus x squared with a parenthesis. And then we are all done, plus C. All right, lastly. Integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared. This is not correct. Why? Here is the deal. I will write this down for you guys. Uh, when you have integral of 1 over ax plus b, this right here, you do get ln. You see this is the linear function, x to the first power. And then just put the bottom right here. And the derivative of this is a. Doing backwards, you have to divide it by a. So just like that, right? So only when you have x to the first power. This is x to the second power, so what do we do? Yes, this is the time that we use the inverse tangent of x. The answer for that is inverse tangent of x plus c. Well, suppose you didn't know that. You can do a trick up. So let's go ahead and do that. For practice purpose, for practice purpose, 
I have a trickshot table here too, alright? <laughs> anyway, we see 1 plus x squared. What we do first is, you put x equal to tangent theta. And the reason is because 1 plus tangent squared gives us secant squared. But once you write this down, you still have to figure out dx. Differentiate both sides then. The derivative of tangent theta is secant squared theta d theta. So this becomes the integral of 1 over 1 plus x is tangent. And then we have the square and then the theta. And the dx is secant squared theta d theta. But this right here is precisely secant squared theta as well. So in fact, this and that cancel out very nicely, and we just end up integrating 1 in the theta world. Keep that in mind, in the theta world. So when you do this, you get theta. But not done yet, because originally it was in terms of x, so we also have to go back to the x world. But have a look. We know that x is equal to tangent theta. That means theta is just take the inverse on both sides. So inverse tangent of x. So finally, this right here, inverse tangent of x, and then I'll put a plus c. So that's how you get that. So this right here should give you a pretty good review with your calculus two integrals and all that good stuff. More, most importantly though, don't make this kind of mistakes. That's it.